Hey everybody, happy Friday. It's Matt here at the Home for Wayward Records. I know it's been a while since I've done a video and I apologize for that. Um, I started back to work teaching my 25th year in education and it was kind of busy and then I got sick um, pretty much day two and was sick, pretty sick for about a week and a half or so. Missed some time and it's taken me a little bit to recover. So sorry, it's been about a week and a half, almost two weeks since my last video. I will get caught back up and have some, some stuff coming for you this weekend. But I'm back and I feel better and I'm ready to talk about some records and some cool stuff that's, that's come in recently and some stuff I'm pretty excited about. So, so let's get started. Let's talk about some new stuff. First, um, a new reissue. Another one part of the Vagrant uh, 25th anniversary reissue. And, and this is a record that I really like and, and is so kind of cool and good. And I've had the CD for a long time and I, I missed my chance to get the vinyl. But it is the Lemonheads. It is their self-titled album. Or I mean, Evan Dando is the Lemonheads. But the cool thing about this one is the band with him in this is Bill and Carl from The Descendants and all. And, and it's really good. It's just kind of almost him doing Evan Dando-y uh, pop punk stuff. And it's just a good, strong record. And, and if you've kept up with Lemonheads and know, um, it had been almost 10 years since Car Button Cloth when this came out. And, and it, there's been some stuff since then. But, but he's had a lot of problems with um, addiction and a lot of things. And he's really struggled. So um, not much comes out new music wise from Lemonheads just because the shape he is in so so this one is is a really good record and is one that I I think you should check out if you haven't yet and and this reissue is pretty cool I ordered this one directly from Vagrant so I got the green with the black splatter splash in the middle of it um and I like that one that's pretty cool so this is directly from the Vagrant store for the 25th anniversary. There is an, another color for the indie variant. Um, I didn't pick it up since I, I just got the one, but but it's pretty cool. It is um, 11 tracks, and like I said, it's definitely just worth checking out. It's a really good, strong record. So Lemonhead self-titled with Bill and Carl. All right, that's number one. Um, number two, totally different vein, is Health, uh, Disco 4. Uh, if, if you haven't heard this, uh, it's part two of, of a series. The first one came out in 2020. Uh, this is part two of it. This is just, um, so it's health and then with some extra people. So Poppy is on here, Nine Inch Nails, Lamb of God, uh, Street Sex, The Neighborhood, Perturbator. Uh, it's just, it's industrial, it's metal, it's industrial metal. It's, it's kind of an industrial pop. There's synth pop in it. Uh, it is a little bit of everything. It is really, really amazingly good. There's so many throwback things in it that make me think of especially 80s and 90s industrial music. And and I'm really, really smitten with this one. I did not have the previous one, so they, it comes where well, there was a limited version of it to where you got part one and part two together in a sleeve. And those were pressed on white vinyl. So I had to grab a copy of that. So I picked up both versions, um, part one and part two together on white vinyl. It, it is it is a, a really, really good record. If you like industrial music and, and industrial metal, this is well worth checking out. They're on tour right now. I know, I think they just played Dallas earlier this week. Um, it's not a very long tour, but they are out. So definitely check it out if you want. So this is Health, and, and I would definitely, yeah, I, I really like this one a lot. I've, I've sent out recommendations to a bunch of friends on this one too that I know like industrial music, and, and they've all been pretty pleased with this so far. So there is that one. Uh, not as industrial, but but kind of along the same sort of vein is the new album from Working Men's Club. This is their second one. This is called Fear Fear. Um, if you have not heard them, these are this is on Heavenly. Um, it, it just came out. This is their second record. It is it is really good. It is directly out of of the eighties. It is it is synth pop. There is, I mean, it it sounds. There's a little bit of Depeche Mode in here, and there is. Um, I mean, everything from a little bit of post-punk, um, a little New Order, a little kind of gothy in it, too. It, it is really, really good. It, it feels like it can't have been made. It really is weird because these guys are pretty young and from the UK. And I know you're sort of immersed in that music over there if you want to be. Um, but it, it, this album feels so retro that it's hard to um, put who it is with how it sounds. I, I love it. I really do. 
it's a really great record. This one is on kind of a clear pink, which is pretty cool. Um, I think this is the indie variant. I know there's a white and a few other color copies too. Um, comes a little slip, a little kind of gigantic cardboard OB strip on it, which is kind of cool. Um, so this is Working Men's Club, Fear Fear, their second record. This just came out a few weeks ago. Uh, mine got a little delayed getting here, so I kind of had to wait on it. Um, but it's pretty cool, and I like it a lot. Again, I'm shifting, shifting a lot of gears here. I, I think one of my favorite records right now, um, you know, late summer especially, I this is amazing. And I like their other stuff, but I think this is sort of the best testament of what they're doing. And that is the new Russian Circles record. This is Gnosis. Um, I think it's their eighth record in some way overall. It is instrumental, post-metal, rock. It's just, it's great. The riffs are huge. Um, even without vocals or anything, the music, I mean, it just does so much that you would not expect. Um, I, I've just been sort of immersed in this. I listen to it. I take my headphones to work. And I've been listening to it on my my Sennheiser headphones I got over in, in Europe. And it is just such a huge record on your headphones just to be kind of immersed in it. Um, the sounds are just massive on this. Uh, this is just a black vinyl. There are some uh, colored vinyl copies of it too. But I, I love this record. Russian Circles Gnosis. This one just came out. Um, I think I got it in last two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Red as I was getting sick. Um, it's great. Russian Circles Gnosis. Um, I'm going to skip one and end with it. So if, if you like the Modern Lovers, uh, Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers, if, if you don't know, Omnivore is doing a full Jonathan Richmond reissue campaign. Uh, they're kind of spread out over August and September and October into, um, I think there's one in November also. I, I am super excited about these. The first Modern Lover, Lovers record is amazing. There's so much good in it, but all the records are good. I mean, as the w kind of weirder Jonathan gets, um, you know, in a way, the better the records sound. It's just such a such a cool album. Uh, rocking Shopping Center is is that's just that's just the greatest name for a song. A Rocking Shopping Center. That's pretty cool. Uh, a Abominable Snowman in the Market. Uh, here comes the Martian Martians. <coughs> he gets super strange, and it is fantastic. And this is just the black vinyl version. There's some colored vinyls coming up. I think there's four more coming, and, and I'm super excited they're all coming out because these are incredibly hard to find um, in any way. So I love the fact that I'm getting copies of these, and this is the, the first one that's come through. So Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers, self-titled. All right, last two. One I am super excited about. Um, replacements live at Riot Fest Toronto. So 2013, they got back together, did a few shows, talked about a record, went in the studio a little bit, didn't work out, split again. Uh, I'm just assuming it's done, done. I mean, we're nine years down the road. Um, apparently, uh, Tommy did this kind of without Paul's permission, and I think we were back to full animosity. I mean, to be honest, if they got together again and recorded and did shows, or at least demoed and did shows, and then split, nobody ever said a word and it was just kind of over with, I'm pretty sure that they both realized they can't work together and don't like each other again. So Paul being mad at Tommy, I, I feel, was kind of inevitable. But we get this out of it. <coughs> it's supposed to not be the only one we get. We're supposed to get some more, I guess. We'll see how that works out. It's pretty full. It's a pretty big set list. It sounds really good. It's funny. Um, uh, the, the opening line of it, sorry, uh, we've been having a wardrobe discussion for the last 25 years, unresolved. Um, that's just sort of typical of them. It runs through some great stuff on here. Um, it, it's super worth it. I love the replacements. I wish somehow it had worked out. I'm glad at least for a little short period of time doing some of these festivals and stuff they saw how many people truly loved them and, and how much they meant to us. And for them to kind of come back and then do it all as kind of a giant F you sort of goofy and laughy, um, and then sort of break up and disappear again. Uh, that's, that's the replacements, right? It's kind of what we expected when this happened. I'm surprised they made it as long as they did, but we do have a few good documents of that. Um, a nice big 
fold out of them and they're small moments of happiness where they're smiling. Look, there's a picture of them next to each other, smiling. I, who knows how many times that happened. Replacements, live at Riot Fest Toronto. This one's worth picking up for fans, definitely. And the last one, uh, the last one is one that my vinyl copy just came in recently. I I have been super, super addicted to this. I've been, again, headphone listening to it nonstop at, when I can at work before my classes get there. And it is so good and, and so kind of weird. This is Blood Incantation, Time Wave Zero. If you know Blood Incantation, they're a metal band, kind of an extreme metal band and loud and growly and riffy and whatever else and there is nary a guitar on this record this is sort of if an extreme metal band decided they were actually tangerine dream or vangelis and they just do this synthy atmospheric i think the way i thought about it is this is a music that's playing if you know an alternate version of blade runner somewhere your you know your shuttle is sliding past the moon on its way to land at the space station where the creature is going to devour you later and and eat all the people around you. This is the soundtrack for it. It is so good though. It's two tracks. We have Io and Ia. Uh, side one's 21 minutes, side two's 19 minutes. So it's 40 minutes based in two tracks. And if, if you have seen the streaming versions, they, they do them as movements in it. So they're kind of spread out. I just have been completely enamored with, with everything about this. Even the inside is, there's a temple pyramid and like we've got like sitars and all sorts of stuff a gong i mean they are playing this up to the hilt um and i think it's kind of ballsy to have done it under the 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 name of their metal band since it's such a huge shift to the side i've got like an orange translucent vinyl copy of this um you know and i've read some stuff online i went and was kind of looking to see what people that liked metal of them thought of it and there's a bunch of people that are just basically like straight up pissed that they stuck with the uh, Blood Incantation name and did something that was very not Blood Incantation-y. And I always laugh my ass off whenever any band does that and their fans get upset because I think people get stuck on you have to sound the way that I think you should sound and you can't be different. And I kind of enjoy when um, a band gives them a middle finger and does whatever they want because it's their band and they can do what they want. And if you don't like it, just don't buy the record. It's cool. I'm pretty sure that's not how they're going to sound for forever, but it's how they sound for this record. And I like the crap out of it. I think it's great. I actually, it's just me, I actually like it better than the metal records for some reason. So I love it and it's great. So again, um, a bunch of stuff pretty cool. We've got Lemonheads, Working Men's Club, uh, Health. Let's try to see this. Lemonheads, Health, Working Men's Club. My probably one of my favorites in the stack: The Russian Circles, Gnosis, um, Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers, Replacements. One of my all-time favorite bands, live at Rat Fest Toronto, and then Blood Incantation, Time Wave Zero. All these are worth checking out. Please do at least go listen to them, see what you think. Let me know in the comments. Um, I've got some other videos coming up uh, later on this weekend. We're going to talk about the, since they're all in now, the Slipknot reissue campaign, since those have just been completed and before their new record comes out, um, and some used stuff I've picked up, and just to get back on a regular, regular program. So thank you. Sorry I've been gone. I won't be gone this long again. Hopefully I'm not sick again or can't catch whatever again, and, and we'll be good. So thanks. Have a good weekend. If you're in the, the States, have a good three-day weekend. We're off till Tuesday. That's always good. I'll see you soon. Take care.